Hey, how's it going? So, today we're going to be working on something super simple, but the key here is I want to go over some like very simple but core animation kind of concepts to make something loop. Um, so we're going to go over the usual. And what is the usual? The usual is we're going to first go over the modeling. I'm going to show you how to set everything up. Okay, animate it for putting in materials. I'm going to crunch these things out so it's a little bit easier for you. If you're like, I just want to get to the glowing parts, then you could do that. Um, I'm just going to break it down into four simple steps. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, <coughs> um, if there's any points in the tutorial where things get a little bit more confusing, or if you would have liked me to spend more time, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I love the feedback. You know, I'm not a professional um, 3D artist or anything of that sort. So definitely want to make sure I'm um, honing in on what people actually need to learn but anyway so let's just dive right in all right all right all right feel free to get a sip of your warm beverage or whatever you may like this could be your morning your evening your afternoon or water is always good too let me go ahead and do that before I get started here but all right, let's dive in. So first things first, like always, you're gonna go ahead and delete the default uh, things that come up under, and we're gonna start setting up the composition. So let's press tilde. I like to make it front, and what we're gonna actually bring it up a little bit. Let's bring in a Taurus. Shout out to my uh, Tauruses out there. That's my star sign as well. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around. The, we're gonna play around with these two values to your liking. To be honest, I like to make it a little bit big, a little bit of density. And I think that's what's looking for me. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna duplicate it. And I like to call Taurus Wireframe. Just rename it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give a modifier called the wireframe under generate as you can see here we kind of already have it set up um, I like to play around with it a little bit in terms of thickness give it a little bit less I don't want it too dense but we have our Taurus now and then the next step is we're going to press shift A once again create an icosphere I want to bring down before you move too fast you can see something pop up in the left hand corner. I'm going to bring down my subdivisions to one. We want it to be nice and essentially very jagged. When you bring up the subdivisions, you get a nice smooth ball. Bring them down, you get this nice jagged prism like thing. And we want, you know, keep in mind the end product is we want it to float through. So we want to give it a little bit of space. So I'm going to press shift, mess with my scale, bring it down a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do again, shift D, duplicate, press enter. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to rename it for ICO wireframe. Make sure we have that selected under the modifiers tab. Go to generate wireframe. Now we have a bit of it again. Um, 0.1. What does that look like? Uh, it's kind of thin. What does 0.1 look like for this? Oh, interesting. Well, it looks like the values kind of change. That's uh, zero point zero point one. Hmm. Let's play around with that for now, my friend. All right. The next step is you're like, okay, Mike. I like we animate things. If I grab one, like one leaves it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna parent the two elements together. So what you want to do, I like to have the wireframe as the parent, just to make it easier to select. Click the icosphere in your layers and click the ICO wireframe and press control P, parent, object, keep, transform. And now when you pull it, and when you grab it, they both move. Perfect. All right. So now we need to set the animation. 
Now, first things first, now we need to make sure we have a camera. Oops. Let's put the camera to the front. Move the camera on the Y value, Y axis, or the X, depending on your your preference. Let's go ahead and split the workspaces. Tilde the camera. Just want to make sure that we have something. Let's make sure we have enough room. I'm gonna go ahead and just over here. Viewport just go ahead and turn that up so I don't really see what I I only see the important stuff that I need to see. Gotta stay focused, you know? Mm, still not enough space. What we can do now. Cut back on the pers cut back on the focal length a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull it back a little bit. Some more. Alright, I think that's good enough. Any more we're gonna we're gonna have a really small area of work. We wanna make sure it's kind of big. So now we're gonna get to animating. I animated this in sixty frames per second in the mock-up and I'm gonna do the same. So I just multiply uh you have your start and you have your end. I made it five hundred frames instead. Because when it's 60, you need, you need a lot more frames to make it interesting, to say the least. Now, if you want to change the frame rates, you have to go into the output properties. It's under format. It's 60 frames per second. We have kind of something here. Um, now, the next step you're probably wondering is like, okay, Micah. We need to get things moving. So let me show you a really simple way. So what I would do here is move it up to the top part and your location value after you press it. If you don't see this, press N. Right click, insert single keyframe. Hold shift on your timeline and I'm gonna get to your shortcut. Shift, hold shift and press the arrow key to the right take you to the last um, the last uh, keyframe in your animation scroll out a little bit I want to get half of 500 is 250 so what I want to do now let's go ahead and I just did this negative value thankfully because we're working on these axes there's just like a negative value to it and if you press shift play Got got something going, right? Now, what we're gonna do now is with a mock-up, I had a bit of some spinning going on with my torus. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did with the icosphere. We're gonna parent the two elements. Keep this form. Cool, cool, cool. And what we're gonna do this one's a lot easier actually. So like this. this one's a little bit smaller to be honest. We need all that space. So we're just gonna rotate it on the Z axis. Three hundred and sixty degrees. Oh, one last thing. Which I totally didn't do. Select all your keyframes, press A to select them all. After you select your object, may that be the icosphere or the torus. We're going to do it both. Set it to linear. If we want it to loop, we need these things to be linear. Now, yeah, now we get more of a... Hmm. Interesting. Looking at this animation a second time, I think this value is way too much. Hmm. 
So I'm going to teach you how to replace keyframes. Just right click replace. I don't have to be exact anymore. Oops. I want this to replace the value. There we go. Let's just go ahead over here. And copy it instead of having to figure that out, you know. Close it. interesting one see I feel like with some of these things in blender you really just gotta finagle with it sometimes you'll get it the way you want sometimes from the, on the dot but then sometimes you just won't you know that's okay now I have it like a much more subtle kind of prism floating in there it's fine for now. Let's just roll with it, okay? Second thing we're going to be setting up now is materials. So, <clears throat> head over to the shader. Make sure that you have the wireframe selected. Click new. Now you have your materials going on here again. Go ahead, delete the principal BSDF by pressing X. Go to emissions after pressing shift A. And what we're gonna do now is just look at a rendered version of this. You're probably like, oh, it's a gray background. Click the color in your world tab, darken it. Keep it good enough. Do that strength like three. Go over to your render settings, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space refractions. Uh, and you should be good. Um, now what we're going to do now is click on the wireframe as well. Just click a little drop down. I'm going to name my material glow so it's very clear. And if you click it, you know what is missing? What if we rotated the iconosphere? So, let's just insert a single keyframe. Oops. So keep from our Z axis. Let's do 60. Insert that. And we have something going on, my friend. Okay. Because the whole area is kind of black and white, and, and we're really only focusing on the emissions. We're going to kind of leave that. Uh, it's all up to you at this point in terms of the color. You can change the colors. Um, this depends on your brand, you know? If this is a loading screen for you, then if you want blue, you can get blue. But we're just gonna stick with white for now. Oops. Now I'm gonna show you how to create that cool, like crazy kind of effect now. Oops. So make sure you're saving, <laughs> make sure you're saving your work because Sometimes I don't either. Okay. This final part here. Go over to compositing. And then you're going to activate use nodes. And I'm going to have to dive into this another day, but I'm going to show you the basic needs you need to do this tutorial. So press Shift A, create a viewer. And then press Shift A, create lens distortion. I'm gonna also say reroute. Bring in the reroute, put it into the viewer. Um, sometimes this works for me right away, but today, just do render image. Don't worry about anything. We're just doing it to preview it. Now, as you can see, as you play with the dispersion, you get like a crazy effect. You can get crazy, you can get like 
you can get pretty nutty. You can play with a lot of the values. It's really up to you, you know. Wow, that looks really cool, actually. Really trippy. Hmm. Well, what I did was I hold down shift and I kind of give it a little nudge. Just turn off projector, actually. Give it a little nudge. You want it to be kind of cool because when you animate it, you're going to see. You don't want to give it too much of a nudge, though. Right around 0 0.050 was it's probably good enough. And let's look at. I'm gonna pause it and then we're gonna look at our render and see what our finish work. But before I leave you guys uh, to watch this render, I'm gonna help you again with the render settings. So I'm just gonna go back to layout so you see something familiar. Now, uh, essentially, click on the output properties once again, your right hand side. You're gonna go all the way down to output. What you're gonna do, the most important parts are one, knowing where you're putting your file, two, file format, and you're gonna run to the F. MP EG video encoding you want MP4 PG4. I like to do it on um, professionally lossless. And from there you you have everything that you kind of need. Uh, once you set up where you're gonna save this, uh, you'll be living in luxury, that's for sure. So I'm gonna call this tutorial finished. And then I just kind of finish that before. And I'll catch right back up to you when this is done rendering.